Hello, welcome once again to Delhi. Just after four o'clock in the afternoon here on a glorious day. More great lawn bowls action coming your way from the Commonwealth Games. And we are featuring this time a women's pairs semi-final between those great rivals Australia and England. That's the match we're featuring this afternoon. As you can see, the sun is shining brightly here. It's another lovely day, cloudless, no sign of any haze or mist this morning. A little bit of breeze around, not consistently, but it's enough to keep the place a little bit cooler than it has been, which is welcome when the temperatures are around 34 degrees, as you can see on the caption. Humidity is pleasantly down to 34, gentle wind speed from the northwest. So, in other words, it's a perfect setting for lawn bowls, and we are looking forward to seeing a terrific match this afternoon because these two pairs are really both playing well. We've seen quite a lot of them on the road to the semi-finals, and they are fighting for a chance to win the gold medal in the final. David Bobin here saying the hellos. David Corkill alongside me. He'll be sharing the commentary duties, and we're looking forward to this semi-final. And still to come, men's pairs, the gold medal match between South Africa and England. That'll be good. But more immediately, it is this Australia against England match that we're looking forward to. David, uh, we have seen a lot of these girls on the way. We know their game pretty well, and you just get the feeling this could be good. Well, it really should be good. The whole idea was when we looked at the two teams, we thought England looked pretty strong. Ellen Faulkner and uh, Amy Monkhouse always look good. And uh, oh, we go. Natasha's parents just, oh, Newcastle. Wonderful. <laughs> Nice way for the cameras. Hello to everyone at home. Friends and relatives around the world, wherever you're watching. Join us here in Delhi. And there's Natasha. Natasha Van Eldick, who was a, a really big surprise for Australia, to be truthful. But uh, from all accounts, played really well during all of their practice games. And, well, like everything else, if you're going to pick on form, you pick the player who's winning. And from what I heard, and I've been chatting to a couple of management, they couldn't ignore the fact that she'd been playing so well. And I suppose sometimes it's no bad thing. Reputations mean nothing whenever you're out there playing for places. And Ellen Faulkner, very experienced campaigner. It's her third Commonwealth Games. Gold medalist from 2002 in Manchester. Didn't go so well in the singles when she played in Melbourne, didn't qualify. So we're just about to get underway with this vital match, this semi-final. It's going to be tense. It could be something of a battle. One thing I have to say before the match gets underway, David, I've got to be honest about this. I think one battle's already won. That's the fashion stakes, and I think Australia have won that already because they look great. Mm. Their outfit looks good. They look trim. They look competitive. They look just a very good unit. You look at the outfit the British girls, the English girls are wearing. I'm not keen on those shorts. I think the shirt, I hate the design. I just think that uh, Australia here are well ahead already on those fashion stakes. I know it doesn't matter a row of beans as far as lawn bowls goes, but that's what I think from the perspective of a spectator. Oh, I, I love it. I really do love it, David, whenever you sit on the fence on these things. And uh, <laughs> you're absolutely right. You know, it wasn't a competition, of course, it never is. But having said that, you can tell that it's almost the old traditional style coming through on the, on the English design and, uh, and, and the type of stuff they're wearing. But if you look at the girls in the Australian girls, everything is coordinated. There's the horn. We're off and running for three hours on this semi-final women's pairs. And Matt is down. Lindsay Armitage. The gold medalist pairs from Melbourne 2006. Four years ago, she lifted that with Karen Murphy as her skip. She's got a new skip for this one. And what we've seen of it, really, Lindsay has been very, very consistent in most of her games. <laughs> Natasha's had a few... Uh, Hiccups along the way, certainly in a couple of games that we covered. So hopefully she'll put it together against a very good pair. I just think it, when you're playing against a better pair than sometimes in the round robin early stages, David, it actually brings you on. The better the pair you're playing, the better you play.
might be just a little bit loose in the first end as the girls settle down. Now, wind will have an effect here because balls, even though it's a pretty heavy green, there is just a little bit of a wind and it can kick up. It's not too bad at the moment, it's uh, just fluttering a little bit on the with the flags, but when you end up in a situation of a little gust, and it does gust occasionally, here we go, just running through. Mm. Yeah, this is a loose end. That's not a very good start for Lindsay. She's been better than that on the road to this semi-final. She's been consistently good. There you go, you can see the wind fluttering the flags to the right of that big screen. Not so much on the left, because I guess they're sheltered more by the trees, but there is some breeze around, so what there is is very welcome, because it's another sweltering day here. The sun is very strong. 34 uh, degrees, and uh, I must say, down on the green, it certainly looks every bit of 34 degrees. Might even be warmer. It's a hot afternoon to be playing Norm Bowls, despite the wonderful surroundings here in this brand-new purpose-built complex. Everything's laid on for the players and the spectators here. It's really good, but you can't hide from the sun here, and it is so strong. A match like this that could take some time will really test these girls. Well, I fully expect this match to take at least two and a half hours. Needs the jack. Oh, she picked it up. She was heavy and picked it up. She'll settle for it, wasn't too far away. They'll be certainly taking this very serious, there's no doubt about that as we see Amy Monkhouse. I still think of Amy and her maiden name, gosh, I can't help it, it just sticks in my head. Looks under, big kick in that backhand. And another one in, in a receiving position. Tri uh, these pairs are played with three balls, triples with two balls, of course, so it's a little bit of a change. Traditional triples played with three balls, and traditional pairs played with four. So they've made a change to the Commonwealth Games, and it's quite a, a good change, I have to say. We're delighted. That's a bad ball, Amy. What are you doing? No point in being short, with two against. I do have a feeling this wind is kicking up a little, just a little bit. She needs to come under this. Yep, she's down on it. Well done. This is worth arriving at. I wouldn't even attempt to draw this. I would come inside with a little bit of pace and give it a chance. Get the ball, get the jack. Well... She's down on a decent line. It's going to have to come under as well. Doesn't want to get caught. Well, oh, could see it a mile away. Should have been reaching inside. Oh dear. Natasha's last ball. Quick measure. I think it might be three on this. We're just going to check it. It's our smiley, man. He's a good lad, Joala Singh Makroya. We He's love indicating him. Indicating three red, which means Australia straight into the lead. A good start for the Australians.
Spring means great deals on Husqvarna outdoor power equipment. See our full range of products in the latest catalogue and enter the draw to win a free trimmer. Visit husqvarna.co.nz to win or call 0800 4 Husky to find a dealer near you. It's good, but not as good as we have seen. I think Natasha waiting for her partner to uh, her lead to find a range again. She's been saying, showing so much throughout this tournament. Right from the start, she's looked consistently good as the lead. No harm going around there when you're lying two shots. Oh, David, this girl has been very consistent. She plays her way into matches. Starts pretty well and gets better. Oh, that kicked out. Oh, the extra weight, that was the problem. Just carried it through, three at the back. There it is. Whoa, there it is now. Whoa, and again. Oh, 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 oh wonderful fun, eh? Wonderful fun. Ellen, Ellen Faulkner, so well known as a singles player, and that's exactly what you do as a singles player. Get that first ball right on the jack. Looking good for the English pair, but... Well, they need it. They're 3-0 down after the first end, so they need to get it together. Yeah. It's a very loose end, though. Um, wants to be on the other side of the jack. Carrying a shade there. Now, really, Amy wants to be on the other side. There's four balls sitting. She wants to cover those. Very straight back. And she delivers Amy Monkhouse. Gets well down. This needs to hurry. It's coming in for another shot, but it's not going to cover. Oh, no, be... Will she play pace to this, or will she just try and draw it? Nothing close, but the back position's all Australia. The trouble here is once you put the weight on, it just goes no. outside. I think that was the wrong choice of shot. I really do. I think you should be drawing with that one and then get one close. Yeah. Make sure you're not losing three or four. And then play with your last ball for the conversion. Australia in trouble here.
Hmm. Well, three shots, plays this ball absolutely perfect, and she could pick up four or five. Oh, this is different. This is well different. Oh, oh dear. Mm. Uh, well, That's that was not what they needed. That was a long way away from that shot. Is this four? If that's four, that's... Three. Oh. Oh, well, they're back in it. Right back in it. There's a happy man. Uh, Always got the happy smile, no matter what's happening. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know. And you are the guy who'll decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you'll say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down a not so good street. And you may not find any you want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along, you'll start happening too. The National Bank, for the places you'll go. And we just want this to be a high quality match. We don't want too much loose play because we know these girls can play really well. We don't want the nerves to get to them or the tension. Bound to be that because it is a semi final for a gold medal, of course, at the end of the road. We just want to see some consistent play. Lindsay still doesn't look entirely happy yet. I'll tell you what, though, she knows this particular rink very, very well. That's more like it. That's better. That's the sort of form she's been showing throughout the week. And needs to breathe a lot more this afternoon. Well, it wasn't meant to be out there, I can tell you. Oh, goodness me. You see where the mark in the ball was there. Still. Won't do any harm. Conference time. A bit more serious than what they were against the Cook Islands, David, I would say. Just a bit. We've seen them enjoying highs and lows, and we've seen how they have reacted when under pressure, too, which was revealing. Yes, it was very revealing. She doesn't look too happy about it. Falling off as well. Oh, it did well to get back from there. 
That sets up a chance now. Come on, buddy. Well, she's trying to wave this good through. Stuff, isn't it? I love the Lindsay's chat in particular is very good. Very vocal in her support of her skip. Yes, she's a she's a very good team person. You can just get the impression that she's an excellent person to play balls with. Well, it's not always easy to get the right partner to play with. No doubt about that. Sometimes you're thrust together by selectors. Otherwise, this is the routine I like. I like love the way she lines this shot up. With a little bit of pace this time. Trying to get into the shot ball if she can. Looks under. Mm. No, that's not good. That's dangerous. I'm surprised that's you played it that way. It's not helped the cause, has it? No. Nice routine, wrong result. Yes, well, she didn't want to take her own away, David. She was lying two second shots, and the danger there with lying two second shots is you make a mistake. Australians. Be interesting to see they're playing this. Yes, she is playing it. Trying to get to the red ball. Well, that's good. She's made the double. No, oh, that's a good ball. It is. A couple of chances. A couple of chances. Was looking for ball on the ball. That was courageous enough. Good ball. Line a double. Oh, are you too wide? No, nope, you're not. I thought she was playing with a lot of more weight than this. She's, if anything, she's under. Oh, I have to play through it. Mm. No damage. Well, close for the second. Two on red. Confirmed there by a, a man. So two on red means it's now. Here's more news from ASX Shot to Win, the great Commonwealth Games competition from Mitsubishi. Valerie's had her final shot at the Games. So, one of these new Mitsubishi ASXs has been won, but you're still with the chance to win the other ASX. All you have to do is find the hidden key. Just visit asxshottowin.co.nz and good luck. Has she got the pace? Has she got the pace? Has she got the pace? She has. Well played. Good draw. Really good draw. Go. And the thing about that, David, is her first ball, which was behind the jack, now becomes very, very useful. She's brought an immediate value to that ball. Quite enjoying things. Oh, no. She's in the groove again. That's it. Well, it's that's danger. Real danger.
Yes, she's just trying to push it forward. There we go. That's the first one. And this is the second one. Little wave. Here it comes, all the way in. Excellent. Mm. Well, uh, to be truthful, this one needs the treatment. It really does. And this is where the difference is with between the men and the women's game, David. The men's game, you would, they would come down that like a, a train. The women's game play a more subtle shot like this. There you go, beauty. Well oh, played. Wow. That's good play from Ivy. Quite often, it's just a different style of play. That's all. Both are effective. Or at least can be. Needs to get past with this. Thin edge would help. Well, that's okay, actually. are getting into it now, aren't they? They are. I think everyone is. Yeah, no, no. Crowds building up. More people here today. More spectators today. Good atmosphere. Getting to the business end of all the various uh, singles, pairs. I think if India had been involved in the final stages of more, it would have been slightly different. But I think, looking at their results, India have done extremely well. Yeah, they're on their way. Depends what happens over the next couple of years, whether they continue to grow and continue to invest. If they do, they're well, this will become a great national centre for them, no. won't it? Well, hopefully. I think they'll probably lose a couple of greens. Don't need four, but uh, well, two. It would be a shame good. if it all goes, but if they can no. keep some of it, they'll be very good. Keep two, keep this structure, Central, which would be good. Yeah, in Delhi, near the stadium, not far from the airport. Just needs to hurry a bit. This could be an expensive one. It's a loose count. Good it point, really sorry. is. I think it's only the three. This will be a very quick measure. If it's close, they'll call the umpire. But there you go. I didn't think it was close. Oh dear. There's the score. Just a scorecard. And it is three on blue. So, England nose in front, 6 5. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> it's high scoring, it really is. Four ends. We've got 11 shots on the card already. I like this, David. I like to see some good scoring. Ones and twos I find frustrating. I love the big scores. I love the scoreboard to open up. <laughs> yes, the thing about that is that, generally speaking, the heads are very loose. Yes. Whenever In that happens. Case, yeah, I know. I you know. know, whereas the ones and twos, it's a really tight... Quality and, tight match, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's one of those games that people love to see for all the different options are available, the shot play, etc., etc. So the idea, David, then, for you would be let's play like a little bit of cricket the first five or six ends and then keep it tight the last three. That's it. Yeah. Oh. I'm happy with that. About 10 or 11 all when we get to yeah. the last three ends. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Yeah, I've had my say now. Both on the scoring <laughs> and, the, and the outfit. I was going to say, you've had the soapbox oh, right today, haven't you? Have. Where have you been? I just feel so strongly about yeah. it. I just yeah. think the England kit is just terrible. You've been in full flight about this. I have. I won't stop. The Australians I know they won't them. thank me for it, but the Australian girls just look like athletes ready to play a sport. And I just don't think the England girls outfit flatters them. I know that's not the object of the exercise, but it helps if you look ready to go and battle for your country at sport. Yes, it does. And, uh, and there we go. As we see, Ellen just dropping in. There you go. But the girls have to be, uh, they're given the uniform to wear, and that's all there is to it. Whereas the Aussies, I just, they're wearing skorts, which is the, this thing, you know. That, it's a shirt, it's a skirt with a pair of shorts underneath and very popular back home in the UK as well. They've been around for a long time. And the synchronising of the tops and the caps and the nail polish and the earrings and all these mm. things. Somebody obviously gives yeah. this stuff a lot of thought to get it all there and I think it pays off. Shoes as well, everything. Even the rubber bracelets are yellow and green. That's everything's done and that's all very good psychology this is where it all comes from the psychological approach to sport just oh she has she got it i thought she had the jack just got the edge of the ball to open it up good head this this is going to build up nicely Needs to hurry, needs to run. She'll hold up a long way with this. Yep, it's in. Good ball. There's a lot of noise up here in the commentary area as we watch this ball of Natasha's dropping in. The Indian radio are in full flight and they noticed our Indian television colleagues are also doing some interviews at the moment. Lots of uh, security and media here this morning. Uh, they were here because Prince Edward paid a visit and sat and watched some bowls for a while. And then, of course, uh, Lord Coe was here. Sebastian Coe, Baron Coe, Lord Coe, chairman of the what organising committee for the London Olympics in 2012. So despite the fact that Lawn Bowls doesn't feature on the agenda, which is much to David's mm. disgust, he was here seeing how the Lawn Bowls worked. Oh, Jen, oh, goodness me, what was she doing? What on earth was she doing in there? They smile about it because she got away with it. She could easily be four shots down now. Oh. Amy, this will have a little bit of work to do to get back from there, I can tell you. Yeah, leave it. Far better to leave it in that situation. Hmm. Oh, this is Natasha's ball. Look at that. Right through the gap. An edge on the jack, and she would have been four shots down. Shouldn't have been anywhere no. near that. Oh, dear, oh dear. Well, yes, you can see the look on her face as if to say, oh, dear. That is, uh, just thinking, what did I do? Mm, I got away with it. Nice. Just. But we don't know what's the score. That wasn't that wasn't clever playing it with that pace either. You know she needs to get a ball in yeah. for cover. But How do they look at the moment? Are they lying? Um, the, the problem still lies for for Australia in that the back position belongs to England. They're lying the shots. Right. But there's the, it's on the right hand side of your picture now. The four red balls are all belonging to England. With the blue stickers on them.
Well, I tell you what, that's not bad actually. That's where she really should have been with the last one. Depending on where the jack goes, that's a pretty decent bowl there. Always going to be hard to get a bowl in amongst the four, but just wanted to get something in the mix. Well, that's okay. That's fine. Now, Amy, do you try and just draw the jack back? Which is a, the lovely little subtle shot, or do you be a bit more aggressive towards it? Rock steady hand. Bit more pace this time, and she's in the area. Needs to hold though, it's going away very quick. Oh dear, oh dear, that moved away very fast indeed. I thought she was closer than that. Looks like another three as we see this ball coming down again. Oh, really did dive. He's on the reds. And there's three of them. The smiling man means that it's now eight to Australia, six to England. Women's team manager Mary Price. Been around the world playing balls for England. Mary, very, very good player in her day. Oh, don't bite your nails. Come on. That's a girl. So five ends have gone now. Four to come. This is the sixth end, and after this, three to complete the first set. And really nothing in it, just a couple of points. Australia, three on the board right at the start. And they still lead, but only by two. Eight, six now. Advantage England at the moment. The key to the Australian pair really is just how well Lindsay Armitage is able to play. Hello. Helen missing the chance, is she? Well, it's round about, it's just drifted away a little bit. It's not going to get back in time. Nope. Just the extra pace on it that killed it. Quick chop between the girls. That's what you want to see your lead do. One right in front of the jack. That makes you very, very happy.
Hmm. Didn't look too happy about that. Oh, Amy, Amy. Steady now, the weight wasn't bad. Steady, steady, that's okay. That held up a lot more than what she expected. Yeah. Held up a lot more than what I expected. No, Natasha, I'm sure she wanted to improve on that previous effort. Jack away, there it goes. Now, where's it going? Good ball. It's not a bad result, I can tell you. She's still one down, but it's reduced from two to one. So the foot the mark there, as she knew where the jack was. Oh, she just needs to miss that. Oh, she has. Oh, as soon as it got past, it kicked around it. I don't think Ellen could believe it. She wasn't encouraging the ball. Watch this, look. Oh, it's bound to hit it. Had to. Straightened around it. Turned out to be a really good delivery. Now, this is a, an interesting end, this one. Come on, mate. Get it right. oh, well, she needs a little bit of help with that. Didn't get it, but reduced it from a two to a single. One blue is for England. So, 8-7, Australia lead, just the one point. We're now into the seventh set, so after this there'll be two to go in the opening set. Natasha. Well, that's a unique place to keep a scorecard. <laughs> Tuck it into the back of the skirt, or in this case, a skort. Amy Monkhouse has got a scorecard, but she uses a, a hard card to keep it in. Uh, Seb Cope is back again to the balls just to have a look around. Maybe he's investigating this for a late entry into the Olympics. It was an exhibition sport back in the early 1900s. He's having a good look at this. It's quite interesting. He was here earlier today. I'm surprised he's... This uh, is encouraging for you, David. Well, I'm surprised he's back again, to be truthful with you, because we're not uh, an Olympic sport. However, 
I know there have been deputations with regards to getting it into the Olympics, but uh, you know, if you think of the history of the, the sport of bowls, it's quite amazing, really. Sharon Renshaw, you see in the yellow, who picked up a silver in the ladies' triples. getting to the business end of this set needs a little tap on her own which would be good good solid tap while not even little edge to bring her around mm, maybe looks good oh just on the edge Edge the other way, and that's helped. That's even better because she's brought both balls in. That's the difference it can make whenever you get a thin edge or a thick edge. What a ball, that is really good ball. On that forehand, under a bit of pressure. Two against. Coming towards the end of the end. Come on, Mike. Come on, Tash. Come on, Mike. Got a chance. Is she underneath it? Oh, she's made it worse. Oh, she's given another one away. That's going to sting. Hmm, disappointment. Hmm, I was never going to make another one out there. Well, the only good thing is that Natasha has got a ball to save herself. Two balls out, it's worth a few shots. I would drive that. Oh, come on, you're joking. Surely not. No way. Don't be playing the back and a little tap in. No, that hand kicks like mad. The margin of error on the backhand shot is so small, it's unreal. At this stage in the game, they're one up. Even if you take one out, I can see what they're saying. We'll play it on the backhand and get the little edge. It's, it's a decent shot if you're playing on a lovely swinging hand, but the forehand, you could take the two balls out and pick up four shots. That's uh, Julie Keegan on the left hand side. Another skip of the Australian triples, and Natasha's parents just having a chat about what shot to play. I think this is a forehand running ball, I really do. There's a chance in the backhand, but it's a forehand runner. Yep, that's the idea, girl. Get right into it. Got a chance of getting a fortunate result, though. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. The right shot, but off target. wee bit unlucky not to get something out of it. She was off target, but uh, could easily have got a result out of something there. But anyway, it's going to be two, maybe three. Mm. It's always a problem whenever you've got uh, a very young player. Although I don't, I can't see anything wrong with the shot she played was right. So she mustn't think about that. I think that was a perfectly 
acceptable shot to play. No excuses there. Execution was just marginally off, that was all. This is very close. This is very complicated. It's very complicated too, yeah. Important right at this stage. Just a point in it. Well, she needed to get into it. There's no doubt about that. Just pulled it across her body a little bit. Now they're calling the umpire out. So no, that's probably we a wise a decision thing. yet. What's your guess here, David? It's hard to tell. It really is. You know, they're closer to the action. I think once you've measured it, that's the thing. Once you've measured it and it's close, that's Andy Ewing's wielding the measure. And you think it's close, you bring out the umpire. Impossible for us to tell. Well, that looks like it might be in. Yep. So we'll wait to see what the damage is. Well, not Two too on bad. The blue. Not too bad for Australia, really. No. So, England back in front, 9-8. And this the penultimate end of this first set. Not too many smiles going about just at the moment, Miss Natasha. Under a bit of pressure. It's a tight game, we expected a tight game. It's turning out that way. Roughly an hour a set would be reasonable. This is going to hold, needs an edge. Oh, just needed a little edge to hold it through. Steady stuff. Oh, something just flew into Lindsay Armitage there. We could see it fluttering towards her. Not a pleasant experience by the looks of it. <laughs> oh. I'll tell you what, didn't put her off, did it? Just holding off a shade on this. Well, it's now coming towards 10 minutes to 5 in the afternoon. A lovely, lovely day here in Delhi. 
And you might just hear a tannoy system kicking up now. That's our, the police just trying to sort out people coming out of the main stadium, trying to help the flow of traffic. Beauty. Oh, home the fan club in full swing. Oh, absolutely. Mum and Dad. There you go. She's going outside to try and get position with this one. It's not coming back in, though. But it's, I'll tell you what, that may not be that bad. <laughs> that's a hard one for a non-expert to see and say, yeah, that's not bad, David. Mm, it's not a bad ball, I can tell you. Yeah, when no, you see what no, happens here, you but know, it's, uh, you, you must understand that that a non-expert would look at that and think mm, that's yeah. way off target. <laughs> it's nowhere. Yeah, what's it, it doing? Well, what and happens? Yet you're is saying that's not too bad. It's just fascinating game. That you the, can do that. The front ball hits the jack against the, the back ball and it spins off at of that side. The angle's good for it to happen. No doubt about that. And of course, so much can change once the jack moves. You never quite know. When a ball will count. Well, England forced. Or be in a good place. They're forced into playing this running ball on the forehand, and that's really quite difficult. Yeah, but just holds off and holds off. Well, back on the, the backhand now to try and secure an extra shot before going into the last end. Yeah, there's only a point in it, of course, here. It's 9 8. We we're go. in this. Eighth end, and of course, one more to come before the set's decided. And as the sun sets low over the horizon here in Delhi, it's another beautiful afternoon. Absolutely lovely. I have to say, Dave, it's probably been one of the best days we've had because the humidity has been considerably lower. Both yesterday and today, a bit. Yesterday was a bit gusty and windy, wasn't it, at times? This is, <laughs> this, well, I'm not complaining, but you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Come on, let's see what happens here. We want a good finish. Oh, it is a good finish. Almost better finish now because there's only one shot between the teams. Looks like two. We're just going to check with our marker. Chihuahua. A happy smiley man. Chihuahua. It's two for Australia. And it swings back again. Because the two points have gone to Australia. Which means that the score graphic now looks like this. Australia 10, England 9. And we enter the last end of this first set. Oh, there you go. That's uh, two happy girls. Well, they have one point advantage going into this end, and that's nothing at this level. It can change so quickly. Bit of loose play here, and it could all be over. They could lose the set quite easily. Well, why they're happy also is the fact that both of them are playing steady balls. Uh, neither one's under severe pressure. Same with England girls. They're playing steady balls. No one's having a nightmare. But at the same time, no one is having an absolutely outstanding game. And if one of the girls was to come on to an outstanding game, well, that could change things quite dramatically. Doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad. Oh, that's a beauty right in front. Well, you just mentioned if one of the girls suddenly produces the goods. And right on cue, Ellen Faulkner does just that. Or else, as Amy Monkow scores a else. 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 Oh, 
It's a good Australian reply. Certainly is. This is going to be a good head. Yes, when you get one in like that as a lead, you really concentrate very, very hard on the next one. The opposition is going to be after you. That's good. Just round the back. At some stage, someone's going to have to attack this, whether that be Lindsay Armitage or Natasha Van Eldick. It's going to bring that back ball of England into play. It's not enough for England, though. They don't want to tie the set. That's the first target is to tie the set, but the second target is to win it. a good effort she's chosen just the right moment to play some very good shots brilliant edge oh that's so close so close you could see what the intention was there, and she wasn't far away from achieving it. Just a fraction would have taken well, the jack. She's just missed it, but at the same time, she's come into a good position at the back. Which is still there at the moment. That's the beauty of this sport, isn't it? How things can change. You think, OK, we're in, and suddenly you're not. No doubt about it, it's a highly technical sport in many ways. But it's not always about attacking, it's about defence and counter-attack and putting doubts into your opponent's minds. All of that comes into it. She's trying to just play around that short ball. She can, but drop short. Bit of a nothing ball in the end. Hmm. Which is not good because you're leaving this forehand open and Natasha is very good at the pace shot, very good at the weight shot. Holding off this time. Now will it stay on? Will it just stay on? Nope, she's lost the ball. Ooh. There it goes. It's... This is going to be tight. Well, the problem is that for England anyway, the second shot that Australia have got are so close that they have to almost give the shot away to get another one. Mm, that might change it now. We've got two against one. Now she's got a bit of a problem picking the line here, hasn't she? Well, she has, but I think the bigger problem she has is if she drives, the shot ball could edge onto her ball and she'll be two or three down, and that's a, a set lie against. So she has to be really careful. The backhand is a safer shot. Oh, ho, ho, ho! Whoa! What a result! What a result! Oh, she's smiling now. Oh. Look at that. Big relief, big relief. Going away from the head on the backhand, gets a big, heavy, thick edge. Oh, it's hard to tell. We still think it's one to England. Well, it was a massive result, that, I can tell you. Uh. We still don't know who's actually lying the shot, though, for sure. That's the problem. We just don't know. Looks like England, doesn't it? Well, hard to tell from the angle we're at. Well, if it's one to Australia, that would be absolutely cruel. There's no doubt about it. it certainly looks like one to England to me, but try and, try and get two out of this, the way it's sitting. I don't think they're going to get two out of it, just the way that's sitting, but... It 
it's offered up an opportunity for Australia. But I think it's one to England. What's she going to do here, though? Well, it's a problem because the back position's not bad. She doesn't want to go anywhere near the head. She has to think, what are the Australians going to do? Well, they're going to attack the head. So if anything, play deep as far as you can get round the back. Oh, that's very wide. Well, no, that's OK. She's coming to a good place. That's the idea. She wants to get as deep as possible. Yep, that's not bad, I can tell you, because if the Australians attack this... Now, what she's done is she's put a doubt into the minds of the Australians because Australia are lying at the moment a tied set. They're getting something out of the set. If they attack this and it goes wrong, they will lose the set. Yeah. The options there, if they attack it, it could go right. Don't get me... You know, that's, that's the whole thing about this sport. If she plays this on the forehand with pace... I'm surprised I haven't called for yep. coaching advice well, yet. Uh, you know, the thing is that if they play it on the outside, what she's saying is the ball might go clean. It may not, but it might go clean, and they'll get one shot if it goes clean. If it doesn't go clean, then it, it probably will be still the one against them. However, if they hit the front blue one of that four, it goes onto the jack, the other ball, the, the, the power transfers through the other ball, there you go, into the jack, look at the back position, one to Australia at the right, one to England in the middle, and another one to England on the left. That's why Amy Monkhouse's last ball was a very clever ball. It's putting a doubt in the mind of the Australians. That's a good example of what I was saying earlier, or asking you earlier, about what looks like, to many people, a wasted shot, but it's got a great strategic value. So, I don't know how this uh, is going to resolve. I mean, nobody can predict this. So much dependent on the shoulders of uh, young Natasha Van Eldick. This is a well, big moment for her as Skip. Big this, responsibility. This is desperately risky. It really is. If she decides to go for this, it's really risky to try this, I can tell you. <laughs> Sometimes, just occasionally, David, you have to think, I'll walk away from this and win the second set. Yeah. Well, the shot is definitely in England's side, and she's going for the, the runner. She's on the outside. Now, what's going to happen if she hits this clean? Nothing. Nothing. Doesn't affect it's tight it. end. I think that's a reasonable result, to be truthful with you, because that was a very dangerous shot. So that's the one on blue to England. Now, see me with... The little pouch that she uses for marking the score. So that confirms that it's a tied set. 10 all, Australia 10, England 10, after nine of the nine ends. So away we go, into the second set. So this match will more than likely finish on the second set rather than a tie break. Having drawn it, it does happen sometimes where you draw two sets and you go into a tie break, but it is very, very unusual. But I think it's a reasonable result that both teams got something out of that first set. There was very little between them. Good effort. Very good effort. 
Well, this is a lovely time of day to be watching top quality lawn bowls, isn't it? The shadows are lengthening, the lights are coming on, the sun will soon be gone, although it is still with us, but it's just a nice temperature, it's a lovely setting. We've got some fascinating play, and all in all, it's great to be here bringing this to you at home, wherever you're watching this around the world. Hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Good stuff from the Aussie. Very good for the Aussie. England attacking. This needs a little bit of power on it to get there. It's going to slide under. First end of the second set is often a danger end for people. Well, we didn't uh, anticipate a tied first set, I don't think, David. We thought it'd be close, but uh, in fact, I don't think in this tournament we've had one of these yet so far in our televised coverage. Not when you and I have been commentating. Well, certainly not in the first one. We have, we've had a couple at the, in the second one where people have won matches that way because they're happy to walk away. But that was an interesting head of, of bowls simply because it just looked to me like it was always going to end up a tied set. Now, the Aussies are in a very good position here. Natasha should be trying to turn the jack around the corner, and if she misses it, she gets a back bowl. Two options, the only thing not to be is short. <coughs> I love the strategy of bowls. I always have done from a, a young boy. It's, uh, I think it's, it's like chess. It's very and, much a um, thinking game, it, isn't it? It is a thinking game, and you can put so many doubts into your opposition by all sorts of little subtle mannerisms, and we've learned over the years just how people do certain things. One thing, for instance, never, ever practice bowls with David Bryant <laughs> before a major competition. Great David Bryant. He will absolutely bamboozle you because David never stopped talking. Trying to get this down, trying to get this down, trying to get it down. Oh, that is a brilliant ball. What a good ball under the circumstances. Most people would have been trundling down at that with a bit of pace. But Amy Monkhouse draws it in. In many ways, it doesn't really matter if it's a shot or not. It's just a really good ball in that position. Now that brings her back balls into play. That's a good cover. That's where the first one should have been. That's a very good cover. <laughs> More words from Ellen to encourage Amy Winehouse. I love the way she lines these shots up and then the individual style she's got, but she's bowled very well. She's bowled very well. They both have, and this is a, a fascinating match. There's nothing in it between these two teams as evidenced by the score in that tied opening set. Well, again, not a bad ball there, useful. It's amazing how one ball can make all the difference in, the, in an end. It's wonderful how the balance ebbs and flows all the time. You know, each shot changes the balance at the head and you can see the looks on the girls' faces. It's mm. not good enough. Well, two short balls in that situation. She could have been up to trail the jack around the corner for four. That was a missed chance. Even at this early stage in the set, those are the sort of things you're always looking for. You know, Lindsay Armitage put three very good balls in, but in real truth, they just haven't really capitalised on that. Amy Monkhouse has played one good ball. There she is. She played three brilliant balls. We still believe that Australia are lying the shot. So a little turn of the ball is what Amy's after. Needs to bend back from there, needs to start to bend. Has to hurry. Has to hurry to get back. Now you have to hurry. Now you have to hurry. Turn it over. Oh, it's a good effort. <laughs> Just needed a little bit more power to measure. There was actually a little nudge. You'll just see this. Outdoors on a grass, this wouldn't make any difference. But look, a good solid nudge. We're playing on a carpet material, an artificial surface, and that's made a difference. That little touch made a difference. That was just enough to give England the shot by the looks of it. Two really good balls by this girl.
girls coming up just for a little chat to see about discussion about the length that they're going to play with. There's a happy man, and the good news for England, it's a point in the opening end of the second set. So England have the early lead, long way to go, but uh, could be significant. Look at that lovely family day out and a beauty of a day it is too i have to say i know you've said about that david but it's just fantastic isn't it i, I must admit this is one of the nicest days we've had in delhi beautiful it evening is. but we have a, another shift to do after this an evening session ah uh, we look forward to the wildlife then yes that's when they'll arrive the grasshoppers the crabs the locusts Butterflies, you mentioned it, moths, mosquitoes. Good start. Very good start. Other matches going on, of course, on the two greens. And you might hear the cheers every now and again. Malaysia are playing against Wales next door. That's good. Anything round about, give your skip a chance. It has to give your skip a chance. No, Ellen. Hold, hold, hold. You need to hold. You need to hold, girl. Yep, that's good. That's good. Amy's very happy, and that's good enough. Lindsay needs to hurry as well to stay to the ball. Well, I'll tell you what, that straightened up at the end. That looked like it was going away. I think that's what the girls are saying. Yeah. Oh. Bit of a surprise. Very much so. Look, it's going away there. Oh, there's a the kick. There's Just another one. back, yeah. There's a lot of runs coming up in this night. It really is. Jack, Jack. Yeah, she's got the Jack. Oh, this is great stuff. And both teams are having really good stuff here. For the first time in the match, Natasha Van Eldick with some pressure here on this shot. Big expectations now to solve a problem. Well, it's, this time it's actually a pretty decent shot for her, to be truthful. I mean, she can run into this and, and make changes. The alternative is a draw on the backhand. If she misses it, she'll oh, get into position. She doesn't like it. Well, It'll kick into the surface of a stamp of the foot. Yeah, well... I think she ended up closer than what she thought. I'm a little bit surprised she played that. There's a lovely shot in the forehand. It looks like a beautiful funnel to get into. Just a bit frustrated. Yeah, she doesn't look too uh, pleased about that. It's Biting the nails at moments of pressure. Done that throughout the week. A politician back home used to do that, that I remember. When I say back home, I mean back in the UK. Could get an edge here. Doesn't need it. 
Dropping in behind, that's good. Another good ball there. Good effort. She had beautiful weight for the shot, but it's a more difficult shot than the runner, and that changes things a little bit because she's put a ball in front now. That's locking the ball half in, and also it looks like it's going onto the jack. Now, what they're going to do here, England, they're going to play on the forehand, come around the balls. You have to be reaching with this, Amy. You want to be away from the head, round the balls, and what you're doing is sending a message to the opposition that if you get this wrong, you're going to lose more shots than what's in the head at the moment. Yep, that's good. Now Australia have to think about this for a moment. Down on a decent line here. Got a chance with this. Needs to kick back quickly though. It needs to kick back quickly. There she goes, it's close. Oh, that's a beauty. Well drawn, girl. That's a beauty. Well played. Well, no, no smiles there for a couple of balls, but uh, a big smile with that one. Oh, it just picked its way through. Seemed to almost go around the other ball and then roll back in. That's the idea. Come around it. Oh, look at that. Look the, at that. The bias comes Great off. Stuff. Thank you very much. Well done. Oh, a little tap on the, the booty as well to say. Good girl. <laughs> It's a great study of concentration. Yeah, she's after the ball here. She's trying to play inside the line. Needs to hold a little bit. Got a chance onto something. Oh, taking everything away. I think she's got the shot. If not, it's going to be close. She was line two before. They're calling the umpire. We did see this coming through. There were line two, Tasha drew it, ball on the ball. She hit an Australian one in, which took three balls out. Ellen claps. That gives me the impression that England are going to get the shot out of this head. It was a hit into the pack. She couldn't filter her way through for the single ball. So it's a little fortuitous if she comes out with a shot. Oh, that's well in. In by the proverbial mile, by the looks of it. Jawala Singh, come on, tell us what's going on. There he is. Just the one, but it helps. He's a, wow, we like this guy. And he helps England to double their lead. They're now two points ahead in the second set. After two of the nine ends, they lead 2-0. Having shared the first, tied it.
Well, a little bit of space around, but uh, always good to lay the shot. Oh, that's a beauty. Even without the touch, it was going to be a good ball. That's much better, isn't it, from Ellen? Well, it's a good recovery ball. As the sun is just coming down over the skyline of Delhi. It does look so great at this time of night, I have to say. <laughs> Topping underneath. Australia and England just having a bit of a laugh there as they get themselves sorted. I think there might be just something in there that's not meant to be, that's all. <laughs> yes. This is worth arriving to. Got a chance with this one. Just kicking off from the outside. Well, if it's, it has stayed on. I was going to say if it stays on, but it has stayed on. We can see that. And just as the sun's going down, the floodlights are really coming through now. The transition from daytime to nighttime here is very, very gentle whenever the floodlights come on. They're so strong. I get the impression this might be a bit more aggressive with this one. Play it with more pace. Yep, there it goes. Looks like it's under to me. Yes, it was. It's the right shot. Absolutely spot on in terms of the right shot to play. Pluck the ball out. Choice of shot good. Execution just slightly off. Looking good with this. Looking good with this. It needs to run, though. It needs to hurry. Oh. If she's made it, it's very good. If she hasn't, it's a missed chance. But it looks like two. <laughs> two it is. Two more for England. Well, this, um, this frustrating start to the second set for the Australian pair, they now trail 4-0 after three ends as we head off into the fourth end. You mentioned the capacity there, mate. I mean, think of... I love... Well, a bit of a chat for the girls just to find out what they're going to do. Now, it looks to me like they're going to put the mat right back. There we go. Little chat. Decision time. The mat's going to go right back, and they're aiming for a short jack length, which is 23 metres. This is quite difficult to play in terms of delivering the jack. Inevitably, you push through it a little bit just to make sure you don't want to miss it. And that's what's happened. She's moved back about another 
Well, probably two yards. But that's fine. If you're going to go for a, a proper 23 meters, you bring the, the mat right up to the peg and you deliver the jack because you've got two meters behind the tee mark for error. That's the only way to really guarantee it. It's a good starter. Little touch. Ooh, that's good. That's very good. Finish in a very good place. Now er the tactic might be paying off. Well, it's early days in this set, but uh, generating a certain amount of excitement. I did just say might be, David. Oh. And the danger there, David, is that you're trying to draw to the jack, but actually if she'd have drawn to the back bowl and forgot about the jack, it might have been better. Well, it's very short. It's very difficult for us to get the boom over there, but it looks to us like it might well be two. Happy. Well, that's actually not such a bad thing, though, because if you play a poor ball and you know it, well, that's fine. If you play, play a poor ball and you think it's close, that you're in a heap of trouble, believe me. Because then you've nowhere to go. Needs to come back. Oh, well played, Amy. Well played. Oh, it's been played some really good balls. Oh, yes. Well, it's a very good effort from Natasha. Didn't waste any time in removing the ball. Out first time, have to do it all again. Well, they're looking at this one. Needs to hurry though if it's going to make it. Needs to make the trip. Oh, that was the problem. The weight wasn't that bad actually. Just a little bit more. Lindsay indicating that there's two shots in it. Oh, that's number three. This looks a lot better for Australia, doesn't it? English pair gonna have a little chat. Well, the coach sitting there. 
That's Bryce shirt. I'll stop thinking of it. <laughs> Close to this. Needs to hurry though. Oh, she's got a little edge. Oh, second ball. Three to one by the looks of it. Half ball, pushed the front one in, but followed through herself. If it had a drop down, it would have made shot. This is tight. Oh, that's a caliber job, I think. It really is. Oh, that's not, no. no. Looks to me, actually, as if there's two in it, to be truthful, but I'll call it, yep. I think that's a wise move. Call Andy Ewing's in, get it sorted. Looks like two. Wait for confirmation. It's two reds, so it's two to Australia. Only Kiwi Bank offers a rewards credit card that lets you and up to four close friends or family pull your Air New Zealand Air Points dollars. We're a very close family. Go fly. Getting more Kiwis off the ground. In a tactical game, that match come up a little bit as well. I've worked with those guys when they came to the UK on Channel 4. Yeah, I got to know them reasonably well. Correction needed here from Lindsay Armitage. And she's made the correction. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. Oh, we've still got five ends to go in the set. And you just get the impression that it's starting to hot up. 
The prize, of course, is a guaranteed silver medal with a chance of going for the gold. Oh, good stuff. So it's very hard to explain just how important this is. Oh, under, big time, under big time. Look at that, woof. Swinging away like a submarine under attack. Two nothing balls, one good one. But it is the shot. Golden sunset over Delhi, isn't it wonderful? Stadium to the left, of course. We haven't had a chance to go anywhere near that yet. October 2010, we shall always remember being here during these games. Just needs to come through, oh, Amy, underneath, but it's not a bad ball there, I can tell you, good pace. Worth arriving at this. Try to punch the ball out. She's now in a situation of got a, she's got four second shots. This needs to hurry. It needs to hurry. Oh, out hard. Oh no, she didn't have the weight. She didn't have the pace to push it. She was only drawing to it. It needed to be played with a lot more strength than that. Just got it on the edge. Then that's gonna make it a lot harder. Natasha, you need to hurry with this, you need to hurry. It's, oh, but by not getting there, she's actually offered up a really, really good protector. So there's value in that ball. This looks under as well. Might get an edge of her own, not quite. Mm. Not sure about that shot, to be truthful. I think even if she gets it, the plant or gets the split on the front and runs through, it's gonna be difficult. Anyway, another chance for another shot. In with a chance here, in with a chance. Well, that could be three shots now. Oh, too definite. That's a really good ball at the end. A safe shot, but a good ball. Three red lollipops is good news for Australia. It means that Australia back in front 5-4. In fact, they haven't led in this set at all. They do now for the first time.
Those first lead balls just looked a tiny bit tired. And so. <laughs> the other problem is, David, for a lot of people when they're playing in events like this, because you're playing in different sessions, your meal times are messed up quite considerably. You never want to eat a large meal before a match. But at the same time, if you're going back-to-back -back games, you don't get a chance to eat properly, and that hurts you because yeah. you, you've not stored up any energy. So, you know, the concentrated the idea is to get a few carbs in early and then just munch away on a few bananas and, and things like that just to give you some energy. You get really sapped there. So it's, uh, it's never easy. No, you've got to be prepared right here and always, of course, taking on lots of fluids. But getting it right, the balance, that's a difficult thing. It, it is difficult because a lot of fluids tendency then, if you take on a lot of fluids, are that you don't eat enough because that sort of fills you up a little bit with, uh, with fluid. Looking good with this. Looking good with this. Yep, that'll do. Number one. Natasha's face is transformed when she smiles, isn't it? Yes, and, and rightly so, because she's a very attractive young girl. And, um, you know, I think, actually, Lindsay Armitage smiles a lot. She really does. I noticed that the last time, the last Commonwealth Games as well, and this one. She does smile a lot. She's a happy person. And, uh, but it's trying to keep that concentration as well. It's very hard yeah. to, to keep concentration if you're... Uh, you know, messing about a bit and having a bit of a fun time and all the rest, just out for a roll-up. Nearly happened to them against Cook Island, so... Sure did. They put their sensible heads on for this game. Head out in the high side. Mm. Short games, of course. These matches are relatively short. Maximum time limit of three hours. And full international games, you're talking about a, a four, four and a half hour match. But you usually only play one of them in a day. Sometimes, occasionally, you might have to play two, depending on scheduling. But uh, these girls will be conscious of winning this match. Get through this one to guarantee a medal of at least silver. Well, that plant's looking pretty good on the backhand, but it's a forehand shot. Well, she pushed that one out on a good line. This is all about how much running she's got. It will come back. They're waving, but it will come back. It'll come back very strong at the end. It's just the weight. That's the problem. Well, it looks like 
Australia are definitely going to move forward here and take up more shots, but line one, they're trying to work out, is there any chance of scoring a lot more? And the answer is no. They've had a good run already, a two and a three. If they can pick up another double here, you start to see a little bit of daylight between the scores. She's pretty close with this. She's pretty close with this. Oh, she's made it. She's made it. That's the spare shot. And those spare shots are just so important. She's coming good, this girl. There's no doubt about it. The last two or three ends in particular, she's played some very good stuff. She created the three, the previous end, and she's developed two on this one. for traditional European beer sticks originated when he was a young man because they were a nutritious, sustaining snack. Dad's traditional European recipe is now available as Verkirk snack sticks. So if you want a nutritious, sustaining snack, try our Verkirk snack sticks. Verkirk's traditional European small goods. gold so a three point advantage with three ends to go for Australia mm -hmm. I was saying David just draw another shot put it on the card 7-4 a little bit of daylight between the scores on the run in if they score this end Australia I think that will be enough. We just need to score this end, and that should get them over the line. England very much aware of the fact they have to score. Yeah, big pressure on here. It's a sort of now or never in this end. Well, a mistake by both leads. Hmm. Sort of cancelled each other out there, didn't it? One mistake, then the other. Punch on that, it's a help. Yep. That's good. That's Just settle well. for that. At this moment in time, England really do have to think about scoring even a single this end. You just can't let the Aussie girls get away. Just dropping underneath. That's a nice shot, look at that. Floodlights, the stadium, the sunset. Beautiful setting for the lawn bowls in this uh, 2010 Commonwealth Games. And we're approaching the very much the business end of this women's pairs semi-final to decide who will go through to take their place for trying. gold or silver. This looks good. Oh, trying hard with this one. That's, if it drops down, it makes a big difference. <laughs> Ellen was waving at it. Please drop, please drop. Oh, how's that ball staying up? Oh, oh she turned round on that. Not a problem with the first ball, she's got a couple more to recover. But that ball's definitely dropping against the jack.
Amy deciding to go on the forehand. It's the right shot to play. She wants to come around the short stuff, try and get to the bottom blue ball, which has got a red sticker on it. She's away from that, but won't do any harm around the back. Nothing mm. wasted when you put one around the back. Natasha with a chance to put the last shot right. Close with this, got it, and she's got her own as well. Yes, took one out, but she took the other one as well. She's very good at the drive, I have to say. Bang, but she took the other one. And that opens up a little bit more space. Oh. Well, don't be too disappointed. You took one out, girl. <laughs> you know, don't she be, sets high standards. Uh, don't be too hard on yourself because, you know, it was a good drive. Okay, you took your own closest ball out, but you still have another one in there. You know, it's uh, one of those things. But you can beat yourself up too much. Oh, he's enjoying himself. He he's is. Happy day. He is. Exactly. He's enjoying himself. And the wife's saying, will you put that hanky yeah. away, please? Don't make an exhibition of yourself. Exactly, and stop doing that. <laughs> Picture beaming all around the world, and he's playing with his hanky. <laughs> no. Wonderful. Oh, Amy, 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 you've missed the chance. You've missed the chance to add another. Mmm, no. So tempting, but she's going to have to try and draw it. Mm, they just got to stand and watch now. Let's see what Natasha well, does this time. Yes, the thing is that, David, there's only one Australian ball in there against four of the England ones. And if Natasha was to drive at this and get a, a bit of a kick, she takes her own ball out, they lose four shots. Mm. So just a draw, the only one down. Yep. It's not the worst situation. If she's extremely confident she can play the runner, but I just don't think it's worth it. Oh, she's out wide with this one. That's going to have to do an awful lot of work to get oh, back from there. Way I can too tell much. you. It just kicks off. The weight was good, actually. Just a little bit in the high side. We're going to have a, a real grin. Grand one on the blue for England. Finale here. So they go up to five. Australia stay on the seven. And that, of course, means that Australia keep the lead, but only by two points as we go into eighth end of set two. Conference time. What do you favour? Yeah, put that up. There you go. That's, all, that's what it's all about with these girls. It's all about that sort of self-promotion and uh, helping your, your compatriot to be lifted. They're going short again. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting to see what this is, because they're not leaving themselves much. They tried this before, and it wasn't too bad, actually, but it was a very tight head. The problem is delivering the jack, strangely enough, because you haven't given yourself much margin for error. This is what they were discussing just a moment ago, was it? It is. When we had that close-up, they were saying, should we do it? Exactly. And if anything, the jack will be long. And look at that. That jack's at least three or, three or four yards longer than where... Natasha was standing because Lindsay didn't want to make the mistake of dropping it short. No. And having to put it back. That's can't blame a lead, but sometimes it's uh, it's just so difficult to get it right. You can probably hear in the background some noise from the big stadium where the athletics and track and field events of course are going on, and that's what you hear every so often throughout our coverage late afternoon and evening. So that's what that is. It's not far away, and that's why you hear it just every so often. Thankfully, we've lost our man on the megaphone controlling the crowds outside. They're all inside. Well, <laughs> he tends to come back, doesn't he, early he does. evening, mid-evening. He does. Shouts at everyone. <laughs> he does. Very, very loudly.
There's only one more end, of course, after this one to be played. So these are key moments, every one of them. Every shot played counts. Every mistake could be terminal. Well, it's not just the fact that they're playing here at this moment in time in October. It's all the preparation of the elite squad, all the camps you've been to, the pressure waiting for the selectors, all the extra work when you really wanted to be sitting at home doing other things. All of that has come to a head right here over the next two ends. Well, that's not bad. Open the door a little bit. Mm. You know, that's what they're talking about, David. I've always thought that, you know, it's, it's great to be here. It's great to do the job, but the reality is that it's not just about these two weeks. It's about all those long hours in the gym or various other places, getting yourself ready. Practice sessions, game after game after game, month after month. And then still not showing, not knowing if you're going to get selected. No, absolutely not. A long road to this level and to this place. One of these two pairs is going to be disappointed fairly soon. Doesn't want to get that one, wants to stay off the blue one. That's OK, the weight was good. Could be close. Not so much for the very young players, and we have some young ones here, including Natasha at 19 and maybe even in their 20s, but some players work for 10, 15 years yes. to try and build a reputation to try and get to this level. And that's, where, that's, what, that's what makes it just so, so important. It almost hurts. Amy Monkhouse concentrating so well. She's down on a good line here. She's down on a good line. It's all about whether she stops. Oh, that's a beezer. Picked the bones out of that one. Absolutely. Oh. What a shot. Really good ball. Well, Natasha's going to have to do the magic now to save this. Trying hard, but it's kicking out. She's closer to the other ball. She wants to miss it. Woohoo. Mm. Well, now. It's a slight problem for England. Be very, very careful if you're going to draw this on the back. No, she's not. She's putting cover in on the forehand. Looks like they're quite happy with the single at the moment. Can't blame them. Put them within one shot of going into a tie break. Needs to clear the road. Mmm, that's not good. That hasn't really helped at all. But a little spring of the jack would be worth three shots to Australia. She's using the mat. She's right on the outside edge to help the ball back. Keep it narrow. You've always a chance of coming into the short balls. Got a chance with this. Needs an edge. Doesn't need an edge. She's got it. She's got it. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, a fraction of an inch. Oh. Dear me. <laughs> so close. As oh. you called it, I thought it's there and it just wasn't. Look at that. Once it got inside the front bowl, I thought she had to get it. Because uh. it was played with perfect weight. Well, the next end is going to be an absolute heartbreaker, I can tell you. And I just wonder, will England take a risk here? There's a, there's a risky well, shot available. They trail available. by the two, don't they? 7-5 here. They trail by two, but on the green, they trail by one. Yeah. Because they're lying the one shot. There's a shot to take the Aussie ball out, which would secure possibly three, which is so dangerous. If she's playing the backhand, she has to be very, very careful. Well, the concentration on that shot, on this shot. Well, if she, miss, if she misses the front one, she's got a chance. If she misses that, stop any time. Oh, I'll tell you what, that stopped very quick. They'll look at it, I know that. I have a feeling it might be two. Now, if it's two, we have a last end shootout. Oh, I don't believe it, it is. Oh. It is. <laughs> this is brilliant stuff, isn't it? Really good ball by Amy, really good ball. Stop very quickly. 
So this becomes, as you say, a last end shootout. And what a finish we have. Seven all after eight of the nine ends. The first set was tied 10-10. We are now going to get a last end shootout for a place in the final of the women's pairs. And these two have entertained us for, what, just about two hours now? Yep. I, w I was always on target for um, an hour a set. Yeah. So that's about but right. Couldn't be closer, David. I oh. mean, you just couldn't separate these two, well, really. Can't on the scorecard. You can't when they're no. playing. All four of them have contributed greatly to this match. Yeah, it's a tough one, and you wouldn't want to put any money on this one at all, because you're bound to be wrong. Oh, smiles and waves. There's Brett Wilkie at the back there in the centre. Played lead in the Australian triples. Lost out last night, but got a silver. Hurry, said Natasha, and it needed to because it's dropped about a yard or so short. So it's all down to this final end, on, and whoever takes this will go through to the gold and silver medal match in Some the final. Encouragement for this because the backhand is a steady hand. It's a good start to this end by England. That hasn't D helped. Disappointing by Lindsay's standards. I mean, it's been a good battle between the, the leads. Mm. Well, she's dropped across on the backhand, which means that Ellen have to change onto the forehand. This should come back very quickly towards the end of its travel. That's a good ball, but it's a bit of a shoulder. She would have much preferred to have played the backhand, I'm sure, but the front ball wouldn't allow for that. This really is tension because you know that one slip here is probably going to cost you the end no, and course. the match. Exactly. It's going to cost you a silver or a gold. A silver or a gold medal, of <laughs> course. down to six All balls. All with it, I oh, oh, It's unbelievable, isn't it? Six balls. So keep the focus. To get through to the final. Close for this. Oh, people are shouting hurry in front of us and... As you would expect, there's a massive gathering just in front of the commentary box, at the commentary position. Australians and England team are gathering both sides. Roars of the crowd in the main stadium in the distance, if you're wondering what that noise is. But our focus here very much, everyone in this stadium focused so much on this match now. The only one still being played. All the other greens and rinks are empty and it's just us and this match. And a beautiful evening in Delhi. Doesn't get much better, does it? She's trying hard with this. She needs to get a pump on it. Oh, oh. And that front ball of Ellen's is just not close enough to be absolutely certain for shot. <laughs> and there's this lovely shoulder to come off it. So who's with the advantage now? Well, Deceptive angle looking at, from at, here. At almost any other time in the match, I would say that Australia are in actually quite a decent position here because and the reason why I'm saying it is that it's very difficult for England to try and secure this head. There's a straight and balls on either side which can come in. They have to be really careful about that. And because of the nature of this rink, it's hard to bend around a short ball. And that's why Amy's been forced to play outside the line with that one. And by the same token, if Natasha draws this or turns a ball over for shot, England are in deep, deep trouble because it's going to be hard to get it out. But because it's the last end, there's a lot of pressure. You want to hold the shot and force your opposition to get it. I know. <coughs> she 
She's down on a good line with this. She's got a chance with this one. Needs to bend now. Doesn't want the back ball. Wow, that held off. It held off. It didn't come oh, on in. That didn't even attempt to come in. And I just wonder, would it be better to block this on the forehand? <sighs> There's a shot in the backhand. Don't get me wrong. There, You can get through the gap and you can get the ball on the backhand. But... Well, this is really tense here. Everyone oh. hushed and watching. Nobody can tear themselves away from this drama and you just can't call it at the moment. I, I honestly seriously think about this girls because well she's pre they're prepared to leave the forehand open and that's purely because of the fact that you could turn the ball over but a blocker would be a good shot as well well if this slides through the gap mm, no change not going to make any difference here we go one ball to get into the final of the Commonwealth Games pairs. She looks wide. She looks wide. It's gone. There's no way that's going to get back. No it's chance. Gone. Oh, she is distraught with that. She just didn't give it a chance, I'm afraid. But, well, it's hard. 19 years of age, it's always going to be difficult. She contributed greatly to this match, as did her partner, Lindsay Armitage. But it's English. English pairing of Ellen Faulkner and Amy Monkhouse who's through to the final. And Natasha's taking this pretty badly because that's a, a hurting defeat. Uh, she's they, she... they played well, and she's done her best, and it just wasn't quite enough on the day. Yes, I, I think she's kept it together quite well, to be truthful with you, but under the circumstances, 10 all the first set, 8 7 to England in the second. It couldn't be any closer, but. It's England through to the final of the women's pairs here in Delhi. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Perfect situation for the England supporters. And they will play Malaysia in the final. And that's going to be one heck of a hard game, I can tell you. Malaysia got over wheels in the other semi-final. And what a great final we're going to have for you later. There's lots of hugs going on in the England camp. They're so thrilled to get through. Terrific stuff. Well done to them. It's always going to be a close game. Australian, just a little bit distraught, I think. With yeah, that, this is but nice. No need to be. Consolation. Yes, I think the tears are there, but that's understandable. Brilliant performance, no doubt about that. Bright sunshine. It's, the game started off. Wonderful shots from all players. No one had a bad game in this semi-final. Everything was fought for. As we see Ellen just drawing another ball in, and her little montage, just showing you the quality of what was going on. There we go, just turn it over. The expectation, of course, was that the Australian pair and the England pair would make the final, but unfortunately, they had to come up against each other. So there's Australia just coming back into the second set, looking good at 7-4 after six ends with balls like that. Excellent ball. There you go. One out on the drive as we turn from daylight into night time. Just shows how much this really meant to her. Really good stuff, David. It's been excellent. I've thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish. And there's been, while we were looking at those highlights, a great bonding effort within the Australian camp. Everyone consoling Natasha. And so they should, because she, as I say before, many times contributed greatly to this match and just checking things off now. But it's England with Ellen Faulkner and Amy Monkhouse getting through to the final of the women's pairs in the Commonwealth Games. Now, for only the second time in New Zealand, the world's elite come to our playing field. Watch 18 Kiwi crews take to the water.
and C4 defend their World Championship titles. They mean business this year. The World Rowing Championship starts October 31st on Sky Sport 1. Coverage brought to you by Aon. Couldn't live more than three minutes from real coffee. Love those wide open spaces. In here as well as out there. It's hard to get to. Maybe why it's the best kept secret in town. Don't tell anyone. The all new Street Smart Mitsubishi ASX. Built for your city life. Love that car. Who can help you win a new Toyota Hilux worth over $58,000? Total Span can. Inquire about buying a garage, farm shed, or commercial building and be in to win Total Span's Toyota Hilux. Who can Total Span? It was a show that broke all the records. It made television history and viewers were glued to their screens. And <laughs> it was unforgettable. Well, guess what? It's back. Come on. Four very different couples, one very dilapidated apartment block. Oh my god. Get ready for a new challenge. Get ready for the block 2010. Soon. Prime. Representative this evening for New Zealand. Born in Russia, but now in New Zealand. And once again, this is his first game. Shalev, New Zealand, 145. Yes, good clean start for him as well. As you can imagine from the name, he moved from Russia to New Zealand at the age of 12. Yeah, just uh, Shalev on 104.04 and Gabinda Leiter at 103.19. So where we are at the moment is that 147 from Nusila Opologi would be uh, pretty useful at the moment because he weighed in at 103.57. Tommy Yule's a bit heavier, 104.61. So this would just put him into first place. Oh, no, this is turning into a real problem for him. 